Welcome back, everyone. If you've ever experienced jet lag, you know the strange sensations that go along with it. Feeling off, constantly tired, painfully tired, like you could curl up anywhere and just drift off in the middle of the afternoon. Well, there's a European study out today that says a lot of us spend our whole working lives in a similar state. In fact, the researchers call it social jet lag and it could be making you fat. For more on this, I'm joined by CBC medical specialist, Dr. Carl Cabasel. Dr. Carl, first of all, let's go through it. You've seen the study. What is social jet lag? Well, social jet lag is this term they've coined for the idea that we, each person has a natural circadian rhythm, a, a rhythm uh, during which the body wants to be awake and certain times when the body wants to be asleep. Unfortunately, because of our social and occupational obligations, we can't always be asleep when we naturally would otherwise be. And therefore, we're always, uh, or people in that situation are in a bit of a jet lag or the equivalent of jet lag because your sleep is sort of cut off prematurely by the alarm clock. Okay, now does this apply to people, let's say, who have to work shift work or can it apply to anybody who's not getting up whenever they feel they've had enough rest. Well, shift work would be the extreme example where someone might have to sort of be up overnight, but it's it's sort of like um, having to work the early shift. So let's say your body wants you to be asleep from 2 a.m. till, I don't know, 10 a.m., but you have to get up at 7 a.m. to get to work for 8 or 9. That means that you're losing that uh, bit of sort of quality time where you ordinarily would have your body would have wanted to be asleep. Okay, can you alter your rhythms or are you born with these rhythms? Well, there is some evidence that you can alter the rhythm insofar as you can make it easier on your body by not have, having sort of wild swings in the time you go to bed and wake up. Now that's not always possible if you're a shift worker, of course, but um, for those who can, if you can get up and go to sleep at, at the same time every day, even on weekends, even when you don't have to get up, mm -hmm. it can go a long way in making it easier for you. Okay, and it's not just lack of sleep we're talking about. The researchers are pointing to increased obesity because of social jet lag. Right, that was the particular interest of the researchers. So we know that there's good evidence that lack of sleep or not getting enough sleep is associated with being overweight or obese. But what they wanted to prove was that the the more sort of your your waking and sleeping hours are off from what they would be naturally. So the more social jet lag you have, the more likely you are to be obese. And that's what they found. They found an association. So it's not necessarily causative, but there is that association between the two ideas. Okay. It's something that I've sort of heard before, though. When you're really tired, your body craves carbs you're looking for energy and so you tend to overeat, you make bad judgments about what you're putting in your body. That's right and there's a there's an actual physiologic explanation, there are several actually. One is the fact that when you're sleep deprived your body doesn't manage your blood sugar as efficiently as it should. The other is that the hormones that regulate whether you feel satisfied or whether you feel hungry are also thrown off by loss of sleep. So this idea of, of the social jet lag sort of uh, may sort of contribute to that idea as well or may be linked with those same uh, hormonal changes. Okay, Dr. Carl, let's go through it again because it's worthwhile. Give us tips for the best possible sleep that we can have. Absolutely. So number one, as we've already said, if you can go to bed and get up at the same time every day, even on weekends, that helps your body clock quite a bit. You want to use your bedroom just for sleep. So don't bring work to bed. Try not to watch TV in bed. I know a lot of people like to do that. But it, what it does is it stimulates your brain when your brain should associate the bed with sleep. You want to sleep in a cool, dark room because that tends to be physiologically the best environment for your body to relax. And of course, you want to avoid stimulating activities like exercise and stimulating drugs like obviously caffeine, but even smoking cigarettes, nicotine can, can be a stimulant and can keep you awake. All right, the CBC Medical Specialist, Dr. Carl Cabasel. Thank you, Dr. Carl. Thank you.